everyone. Welcome to the T62 Market Report. I'm Jennifer Zeller, a Red Tree Realtor here with Abundance Real Estate. Um, today we are joined by Aaron Zeig. He is a lender at A Plus Mortgage. He's one of my top lenders. He's a creative solutions guy. He's reliable. I can reach him 24-7. Well, pretty much. <laughs> and I've been trying in the middle of the night, but he is always there for our buyers. Um, and today Aaron and I are going to talk about higher interest rates and are they a buyer's secret weapon? So before we dive in, um, Aaron, why don't you tell me a little bit more about yourself, like how long you've been in the industry, um, things like that. Sure. So I got in the industry back in 2004. Uh, the market was very different as all of us know now in terms of what things led to in 2007. And for anybody that's seen the movie, The Big Short, um, I unfortunately, I was at one of the big banks. I will leave them nameless out of respect. Uh, but basically I saw some of the mortgage fraud that was going on. I was too young right out of college to really know the extent of it. Uh, but I got out of the industry uh, back in the mid 2000s and I've been back in the industry now for about three years. So Aaron and I kind of got, when Aaron got back in is when Michelle and I got in and I'm so grateful because Aaron kind of reached out of the blue and like, let's get lunch. And ever since then, we've had just a really amazing friendship and a great working relationship. And I'm excited to have Aaron be part of our podcast because he's such a knowledge base. Um, because you also, you are a homeowner, correct, Aaron? And you are also a home investor, aren't you? Yes. For 12 years now, we've been building our real estate investment portfolio. We currently have 14 total rental units and the Yes, our home that we live in as well. Yeah. So Aaron's very knowledgeable. All right, so Aaron, when you and I were talking about a topic, I think you had this idea for a topic, which I think is so great. Um, but before we dive in, actually, I would like to just do a little recap of this week, what you're seeing. Are you seeing apps come in? What do you see? What is the rate at right now? Accepted offers? The rates have remained in the between seven to seven and a half percent, depending on credit score the exact day. Uh, we are seeing applications come through. We are seeing accepted offers. Um, activity has slowed. Um, however, it used to be one of those things where if you got pre-approved, it was not uncommon to see somebody shopping for six months, a year, two years. Um, we have some that, you know, just finally got accepted offers after almost three years. Um, so we're seeing people get accepted a lot sooner. Um, although the applications have slowed from two or three months ago, we are still seeing them come through and we are still seeing accepted offers come through. And I think one of the things we noticed in the last couple of weeks is there's been a real shift in uh, the number of offers going into a home. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like you're not getting four or five offers, you're getting one. It might even take a couple of days. Is that kind of what you're seeing too? That's exactly what we're seeing. Uh, it used to be 10, 15, talking <laughs> to all of our industry partners, let me backtrack here. We'd, see, we'd hear 10, 15, 20, and in some cases, an astronomical number above that. Um, we're still seeing competitive offers take place, but now we're hearing, oh, we're up against two other offers or one other offer, or in some cases, um, it may be uh, the same weekend and we're putting in an offer and, you know, they got three or four other interested parties. And then it becomes one of those um, things of how aggressive do we want to go to just secure this? Uh, but yes, it's definitely shifted from that 10, 15, 20 plus offer range. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, this like everything you were describing just happened with a client from Michelle and I this weekend. We've been working for them with them for maybe close to a year, and you know we they didn't really find the right house, but also, you know, it's they didn't necessarily want to get get into that game of like how much do I have to go over? You know, what is yeah. it going to take? How high do I have to go on the inspection? What do I have to give in the appraisal gap? And so we found, th thankfully, like the perfect house for them this weekend, and we were the only offer. Now we still wrote a nice offer. We wrote it asking, you know, we're, we get, you know, it's not like we went, you know, cut, went low on the price. We didn't, you know, go ridiculous on any of the other contingencies. So I could, but that's what I think. It's like, you're still writing good, respectful for lack of better word offers, but you don't have to go against so many people. And what I like too, is you can negotiate back or not negotiate, but talk back and forth with the listing agent and, um, it's not like just a free for all where they're just trying to, you know, deal with everyone. And so you're really getting, I feel like a really good deal for your buyers too. So that Absolutely. kind of really leads us into our topic today. Are, are higher interest rates a secret weapon for buyers? Um, and I kind of just gonna let you kind of launch off of there. 
So what are, why do you kind of think that this might be a great secret weapon for buyers? Well, first off, let me just start by saying I am definitively going to say yes, it's a secret weapon. Um, however, I'm going to preface that by saying it's, it's not 100% for everyone. Mm -hmm. However, I want to give kind of an AB multiple choice example here. Just three months ago, we were seeing rates in the mid sixes. So call that three quarters of a point lower. Now, if you were buying, would you rather want to see six and a half percent and competing with 20 other offers and having to go what we were legitimately seeing on a daily basis back then, 30 to 50 grand over waiving the inspection or covering it was not uncommon to see at least five or 10 grand on any given offer um, covering five, 10 plus thousand dollars of an appraisal gap. So now out of pocket, by the time you're done, it easily could be 40 to 50 grand above what the list price was. And some of that may be paid for things that came up in the inspection or uh, appraisal gap. So that's option A or option B. Here we are. Rates are call it in the low sevens. If you're a 780 credit score, maybe even close to seven, depending on the, the purchase price and what down payment, you know, what the down payment is. Mm -hmm. But would you rather have that bump up? But now uh, let's say you're buying it at list price, as you mentioned this past weekend, or maybe you're going 10 grand over. So now you're keeping 30, 40, maybe even 50 grand in your pocket. And why I still say 40 or 50 is most of what we're seeing right now is able to do that inspection. They're not having to waive it. They're able to do the appraisal and not have to cover much of the gap. Maybe some, you still have to follow the guidance of your agent. So the kicker is uh, when rate, if and when rates do come down, I say if, uh, we believe they're gonna come down, it's just a matter of when. So when that happens, would you rather A, pay the higher amount, get that guaranteed slightly lower rate right now, or B, get a much better purchase price, much better contingencies in place with the inspection and appraisal. And when rates come down, be it six months from now, or what, let's say it is even a year or two from now or longer, you get to refinance. So what would you rather do? Um, and, and for me all day long, I, I personally <laughs> would take option B and I'm not even talking about the respect level of respecting your own time. Not so much yours as an agent, Jennifer, although I do respect your time, <laughs> uh, but as an individual looking in the mirror, when we think of people that have shopped every single weekend and submitting offers, you know, four out of every five weekends, losing out for a year or two years uh, to be able to get that time back. And then there's the hidden element of rent. If I've been shopping for two and a half years, like I've had clients that just went under contract and I accumulate 1500 two grand um, in some cases of what people are paying for, for rent, suddenly we're talking easily 15 to 20 plus thousand dollars at the end of the year, in some cases it's quite a bit more. So when I factor that up, the time element, um, not having to go gung ho and go 40 or 50 grand over, not having to waive everything. Again, what sounds better? Option A of getting that little bit better rate, but having to give up everything else I just mentioned, or option B, doing a little bit higher rate, but being able to compete and knowing you can refinance when that time comes, the cliche statement of, you know, marry the house and and date the rate that we can refinance that rate later. So and there's an emotional toll that I really have seen on buyers that were, you know, really active. Mm -hmm. And that time when they're like so many multiple offers over two, you know, so there's a fine, the, the cost of finance, there's a cost of time and there's an emotional toll too. Like, you know, you're just like, what do I have to do? And, you know, and, and as an agent, it was also, it was, you know, a little bit of guessing too. Like, I don't know, let's, you know, it looks like we might have to go 20% over here or 10 or 15, you mm -hmm. know, and, and you can, I've had, I had situations in that time frame where I was a higher offer. Um, but they didn't like one of my contingencies and I talked to my buyer and they didn't want to change it. But again, that's frustrating. It was just so emotional. Like I just, what are we going to have to do? Um, and you have buyers that pop in, pop out, pop in. And I think, you know, like you said now with, if the rates are a little bit higher, but you can get in a home or even if you're just going against one or two, that seems other offers that seems so much more doable than 10, you know, like it's a guessing game. And I, so I do, that's what I, I really agree with you. There's a, all those aspects of cost that you can eliminate right now. Um, so, but now there's probably going to be, of course, some buyers that this really isn't still the right time to even, you know, use this secret weapon. What kind of buyers would you think that would apply to? You know, at the end of the day, if 
you're running the numbers and let's say at where the rates were at in the mid sixes just a short time ago when those buyers may have been putting in offers and if they were firmly tied up against their budget at that time and now they're running things where mm -hmm. things have come to it depends have things dropped enough because things aren't necessarily dropping um, in price things just aren't going as gung-ho over in most cases from what we're seeing so I, I never advise to push somebody out of their legitimate comfort zone where month to month, week to week, day to day life is just where you're walking on eggshells. Um, now, again, there's a give and take with that, because if I'm getting the place for 20 or 30 grand less than what I was going to get it for uh, just three months ago, but my rate is that little bit higher, there's probably a pretty decent trade off of there where the numbers are going to wash themselves out. But those are things where we would need to run those numbers with clients. And, you know, I, I had a strategy session about three weeks ago with a client. They decided to opt for this option. And after two and a half years, they won. And they really? were beside themselves and excited. Their, one of their parents called me and thought, how dare you allow them to buy now that their rate is locked in at 7.125 it was. <laughs> and I said, were you, were you okay with them offering at six and a half? Well, yeah, they just were. Why wouldn't we just have them wait until they go back down? And I said, I understand. I understand your concern there. Do you feel like they're unable to make the monthly payment? Well, no, they can't, but this is just absurd, the mom said. And I, I said, uh, I understand that, but what do you think is going to happen? How many buyers are feeling exactly what you're feeling right now for your kids? Um, and they're waiting. And, you know, it's been two and a half years. She goes, it's been almost three years. And I said, you're correct. And I said, what do you think is going to happen if they do go back down to six and a half or six or even high five? She goes, well, everybody's going to come back out. And I said, is it going to be another three years? I, Listen, we can cancel the offer. And she goes, no, you're 100% correct. So perspective is really a huge secret weapon that most people are only thinking emotionally. But if we think logically with this perspective, and again, if you run the numbers with your lender and with the increased rates to what you're willing to put the offer in on, if it exceeds that daily comfort zone, we don't know exactly when rates are going to come down. I am not going to sugarcoat nor mislead in any way. So if it pushes past that comfort zone, that's a scenario where I would not advise. You know, there's a lot to unpack in what you just said. Um, well, first, let's just do rates. I think, like, I think the parent calling you, I think there's a lot of people assuming, like, they're going to drop in the next six months or a year. And I think, you know, there's so much uncertainty right now in the things that are impacting rates. Um, I'm sure you would be the, the, agree with me. Like, we're not making any guarantees at all. Like, it might, who knows? You know, there's, there's the, you know, inflation or deflation. There's, there's a, it's a, um election year next year. Uh, they're trying to care, um, inflation, all these things that, who knows what's going to happen? And I agree not like not to make the assumption it's going to be a short amount of time. It might be a couple of years, but even then we're going to look a little bit at a, an example. Even then they're still making so much money if they get in now. The other thing that you said too, like that you had a consult, I think that's what's so important. I really push my buyers if they're like, they just assume the rates aren't for them right now. I'm like, I talk to my lender. I have so often like talk to my lender because, and I think people don't want to necessarily reach out because they think they're taking up your time. But the reality is like, you can have these discussions, you know, they're not like, it takes a little while, I think, to sink in when people aren't necessarily in the industry. Like, what does this mean comparing this year to lower rates, but you know, waiting. And I really encourage anyone who is uncertain but thinking about it to just talk to a lender. And if you don't have a lender, of course, reach out to me and I'll refer you to Aaron. Um, but it's really important that you know where you're at, not just assume you can't get in this market. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. So what else was I going to ask you? How, so, okay. Of course the, the goal is always though, to still get the lowest rate you can at any moment in time. So what are some strategies if, if people were trying to get the lowest rate right now? You know, keep it closer to seven than seven and a half. Do you have any recommendations to people help to get the rate as low as possible right now? I, I do. And and I want to backtrack on that, though. Although I agree with you on the financing side, getting the lowest rate is is a top goal. You know, at the end of the day, home ownership is still the top goal. But right. That's where I always advise. I don't want our clients, our mutual clients to lose sight of that. So if rate is the hang up, if they fall into that category where it's, Mm -hmm. just a true discomfort or 
just for whatever the true reasons are, at that point, again, it starts with working with the right agent and leader within the industry that can think creatively and has the right partners um, in the industry. And that's where, uh, Jennifer, you know the market. You asked questions in the beginning and you referenced many things through this call in terms of different factors because you stay up on the market. With knowing that, you also know the trends on what's going on with the given property. How long has it been on the market? And if let's say there's a property that's been in the market or you know that there's no other offers and and in those scenarios, we could get creative if we need to, where we could run some numbers on our end. We can collaborate with you and the mutual client and. I think Aaron's um, video popped Sorry. Hi. Did I go out for a moment there? Just a second, yeah. Okay, yes, the call was coming in. My apologies. Oh, no worries. Um, so with that, with strategizing and collaborating with you and myself, for example, we could run some numbers. And let's say they were going to put an offer in at 200000 It might be one of those things where maybe you know you call the listing agent and say hey listen they're willing to come in at 205 or 210 but they want x amount they want seven thousand dollars back on a seller credit or six thousand dollars back and want to do a rate buy down i'm going to say in a lot of scenarios depending on credit score and all the factors that might get it all the way down to six percent or maybe even lower um so there's a lot of creative scenarios available now the seller knows okay well they're paying a little more than they were going to I'm walking away with what I was going to. Uh, buyers walking in feeling a lot more secure. Yes, they had to come up and purchase price, but now knowing there's no guarantee of when rates are going to come down, if that is the hang up, there are creative scenarios available. And I think you make such a good point in this market, really in any market, it's important that you have a strong team. Um, yeah. You know, not just a strong agent, not just a strong lender, but a strong team that works together. Mm -hmm. I know, like when Aaron and I are doing deals together, we are communicating a lot, you know, um, just about whatever, making it go smoothly, you know, all the trans throughout the transaction. So I think it's really important that when you're interviewing either agents or lenders that you who ask who their partners are. So now I want to go quick. I know Eric, you had Aaron, you have to hop off to another call, but I want to like kind of show, give people a visual here of our kind of a, an example of what we were talking about earlier, the scenarios. So can you see the screen? You want to go ahead and do it or should I talk through it? I can see it just fine. Go ahead. I know you put this together actually. So I wanted to let everyone know this is chat GPT. This is not Aaron, just in case. So nobody has any responsibility to say this is exactly anything, but it's a pretty good indicator. So we're going to talk about scenario one, you buy a house for 500,000, put 20% down, 7% uh, interest rate, 30 or 30 year loan with property taxes of about 6,000. So your mortgage payment with taxes would be about $3,000. On the other hand, if you waited two years, you're in the house list, you're gonna have to pay more to get it. Let's say 550, your rate's gonna be 5%. Um, you haven't had property taxes, but you've been paying rent of let's say 1500, which could be very well below for two years. So in this scenario, you are going to end up paying, the cost of the home is gonna be like $587,000. Now, Aaron, I know you wanted to point out another fact on this example. Well, absolutely. Somebody might still be saying, well, yes, with the rent, I'm paying 587 versus 500, but my payment is still lower. I, I know certain people might look at that and they wouldn't be wrong. However, what I don't wanna get lost in this here is that 3161 is temporary. When those rates go down to 5%, assuming there wasn't some drastic change in employment or something that would change the scenario that allowed you to buy, you're going to refinance and you're going to refinance down to that 5%. So now your payment is not going to be 2862 if you're on the left-hand side, if you're scenario one, you're going to be at quite a bit lower because your loan amount is 50 grand less and you didn't pay all the rent um, that you pointed out in these scenario comparisons here and the sanity and time um, that we referenced earlier in this call. Right. And I, um, I, do, I think you make such a good point of, you know, that like we don't know when the rates will drop, but like I said in that example, it's like eight years to make up the difference. Likely the rates will drop before then, and so you're going to refinance earlier. So it's really much likely even further out that 
you're not making it up. Well, Erin, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Erin and I are going to, we're getting rolling on our podcast, hopefully once a month. We already have our next topic picked out. Um, but I really appreciate your time. Erin is a really excellent lender in the Milwaukee area. And I will drop his contact information in the description. But if you're not sure how to reach Aaron, please reach out to me. Uh, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Jennifer Zeller, Abundance Real Estate. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Jennifer. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.